very much for joining me. I appreciate it. Nick, my pleasure. Always good to be with you. So today you had an event in Binghamton to uh, really kind of bring to light what the impact this uh, closure could have on, on, on the southern tier, but there are four facilities statewide that could close. Do you have any wiggle room here with Governor Andrew Cuomo when it comes to closing these facilities? Thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate it. Nick, my pleasure. Always good to be with you. So today you had an event in Binghamton to uh, really kind of bring to light what the impact this uh, closure could have uh, on, on the southern tier, but there are four facilities statewide that could close. Do you have any wiggle room here with Governor Andrew Cuomo when it comes to closing these facilities? Well, well I hope so. You know, today's uh, press conference in presentation that I had uh, brought together the sheriffs from all three counties that I represent, the mental health experts, the hospitals, uh, to show what the impact would be. Not only would we lose in the southern tier a thousand jobs, uh, but the impact on the hospitals would be devastating. Uh, the sheriff uh, said that uh, the jail could not take any more here in Broome County or Tioga and Shenango. Um, these closures would be extremely bad. And what I want to do is put a freeze on them, put a freeze on them until uh, April 1st of 2015 so that we could sit down and try to work out a plan. You know, Nick, I chaired the Mental Health Committee for 11 years. I was the author of Kendra's Law. I was a co-sponsor and help to write uh, community reinvestment. I understand this side of the business very well, and I can tell you that the closure of Elmira, Binghamton, uh, would be devastating along with the ones on uh, Long Island and other parts of the state. So uh, our goal here is to meet with the administration, which they said they would meet with us, and to try to come up with an alternative proposal. Now, is this actually hitting your area harder than the rest of the state? I mean, a thousand jobs is uh, you know, a tremendous number of, of people uh, being impacted by this. I, I, do you feel like this is hitting your region harder than, say, Schenectady, where Odie Heck uh, is going to be closing? Yeah, there, there's no question it's hitting the southern tier uh, very hard because if you, you look at the proposal and then you look at what happens, uh, you keep, they're keeping all of the facilities along the thruway, Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, Utica, uh, and down the thruway open the southern tier gets wiped out. Uh, both of my developmental center and our psych center gets closed. Elmira gets closed. Uh, there's virtually, uh, for 20 counties in the southern tier, no services that are going to be available. Uh, that means it's a burden on parents uh, to have to travel to other facilities. Uh, and to lose a thousand jobs, Nick, right now when the economy of our area has been hit so devastated and it's been, you know, so long since uh, we've been able to create any new job opportunities. You know, we, we want fracking, and I know that's not a, a pleasant word for some people, but it's something the people in the southern tier want. It doesn't seem to be happening. Um, you know, we, we need to keep these facilities open. So how would that freeze work precisely? Is that something that obviously you want to go until April 1st of 2015, but how would that work uh, from a budgetary point of view? Because obviously these consolidations and closures are part of a, a, a yeah. broader budget plan. Yeah, we want to see the numbers. We really want to see, you know, how much it's impacting. You know, a lot of this is being done because of the Olmstead decision that was a, a federal government decision. Uh, I believe there are people that are in the administration giving the governor bad information, uh, trying to say that we have to close these facilities when we really don't have to close them. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, we, we can keep these facilities open or we can come up with an alternative plan to keep certain vital um, services available. Uh, right now, again, as you said, the, the southern tier gets devastated and wiped out. Uh, we, we need to have services for the people with uh, physical and mental disabilities, uh, and I'm going to fight now to, to do that. I don't want to wait till budget time. I want to start right now. Uh, and the good news is the administration has been very open to me and said that uh, they would sit down with all of the parties involved uh, sometime in the next week or so uh, to present uh, our cases and to present some alternatives. Well, how would that alternative plan work? And also, has the administration proposed any alternative plans as well? Because I know this consolidation and, and, and the governor has been a major proponent of consolidating really across the board when it comes to, you know, certain state-owned facilities, state-owned lands, even selling some state-owned lands and things like that. Um, you know, so what sort of alternative
could work here that would I would uh, uh, presume would have to ultimately be budget neutral as well? Well, you know, I, I'm not going to go in and surrender. I mean, <laughs> my first proposal is to keep uh, my facilities open and keep them going so that we can uh, maintain the job level and maintain the services both at the developmental center and the psych center. I mean, that's my that's my goal. I mean, that's where, where I'm going to sit and, and, and fight for. Um, I don't know what alternatives are available. Certainly, I'm willing to listen. Uh, we have a children's unit here that we opened in 2006. You know, it was closed, Nick in 1990 by then Governor Mario Cuomo. Mm. Uh, but the need for uh, children's services, some, some 180 adolescents uh, a year go through this uh, program. Uh, we have 15 to 16 beds, but, but there's some 180 kids that go through this because of crisis. Now they want to transfer them all to Utica? Um, th that's unacceptable. So those are the kinds of things that uh, I'm going to be fighting for and, and looking to try to change in this proposal. Uh, one thing, just to play devil's advocate, one thing that uh, uh, administration officials and state officials who support this are pointing to is a, this a Supreme Court decision from, I think, the late 90s that says that uh, yeah. folks who qualify to live in these areas should be living in a less restrictive uh, community. Just how does that square with what you guys are trying to do to keep these facilities open? Well, that's the Olmstead decision. And as I said, I chaired the committee for 11 years. I know it very well. Um, it, it doesn't say that you should take the 60 forensic patients uh, that are pedophiles, that are arsons, that are criminals, and put them into a, a community setting. I don't want them in my community, and I would guess that all of your viewers, 99.9% uh, .9 of them wouldn't want them in their community. That's the kind of thing we're dealing with here. So uh, I think you can take that Olmstead decision and, and you know, uh, exaggerate it. Uh, but there's nothing in that decision that says we have to do um, everything to close every facility and to let everyone in the mental health or developmental disability population in the community. There's no question there are people who should not be in the community, and there are people who should be. As I said, you know, I was very instrumental in community reinvestment. I was a co-sponsor. That's where the money would follow the client into the community. Guess what? The state doesn't do that anymore. They just stopped doing it. It was the law of this state that if a client left the facility, that the money would follow them so that the local governments wouldn't have that burden. That doesn't happen today, and it should. Uh, just lastly, who's driving this effort to uh, have this freeze put in place, at least until 2015? Are, are parents coming to you, parents and family members of those who are in this facility? Is, is it the workers whose lives could be displaced from this? Who, who are the folks who are trying to get this freeze, in addition, obviously, to state elected officials? Sure. Nick, I got 6,700 uh, different people who signed my online petition. But you know what? Th this is common sense. This is about uh, elected officials like myself who are looking at a community. Why is it that the southern tier will not have a psych center, will not have a developmental center, when, when, when Rochester, Utica, Buffalo, and, and Syracuse will? Why shouldn't Binghamton or Elmira have one? Uh, I don't understand it. I don't understand why they just wipe out the southern tier. That's my problem here. The southern tier loses all of its services in, in a 17 to 20 county area, but yet services will flourish in Rochester and in Buffalo and Utica. Um, it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, I want to change that. It's not fair. The people of the southern tier deserve what everybody else in the state deserves. So that's what's driving it. Uh, a lot of passion from me and my colleagues, um, and I'm going to fight this as hard as I can. All righty. Senator Tom, let us stay in touch on this. Thanks very much this evening.